Thank you for joining me today. My name is Tanya Fox, and you are listening to Fox Talks Business After Hours. Today's society has a lot of people feeling like we spend more time at work than in any other context of our life. It's becoming more common to feel overworked and off balance. Everyone from employees to entrepreneurs struggles to step away and find time for people, activities, and relaxations that restore our peace and balance in our lives. Even if you're a stay-at-home mom, you may struggle between the needs of caring for your family and your own personal needs. We know that it's a 24-hour job. With so many feeling off balance, the growth in personal care, such as getting regular massages, becoming a member of a gym, joining a specialty exercise group, taking up yoga, or just getting out into nature is on the rise. The population is yearning for ways to feel at one with all areas of their life. Today's guest is going to help us on this journey. Rodolfo Menjavar is an author and certified life coach. He was born in El Salvador in the middle of a civil war and soon immigrated to Canada so that he could have a better chance of making a difference in the world. His greatest accomplishments have come from working on himself. He has dedicated a considerable amount of not only time, but money to his personal development, always aiming to become better than he was yesterday. He is continuously enrolled in classes to learn not only about himself, but others, how to overcome obstacles and challenges. By learning and striving always to be better, it allows him to lead others who want to travel down the same path. Rodolfo believes that being a student is not enough. One must take what you have learned and share it with others so that they too can move forward to a better life. He's also very involved in giving back to his community and is continually volunteering and looking for more ways that he can give back. He's best known for thinking outside of the box and carving his own path in life. He's known to not follow the mainstream way of doing things and instead creates his own more effective, simpler way of doing things. In April of 2017, he published his first book, Life Balance. Thank you so much for joining me today, Rodolfo. Pleasure to be here. I'm excited to see what we talk about and what comes up. Well, I wanted to mainly talk about your book, Life Balance, that is out. Um, But I wanted to know a little bit more about you as the author and stuff like that. So tell us a little bit about your life up to this point. Hmm. All right. I'm like, where do I start? <laughs> so you immigrated, as we, uh, as I had mentioned just before in your bio, your family had immigrated to Canada. You were very young, though, when you came over, weren't you? Yeah, I was one and a half when we came to Canada. It was actually right before the tornado that was in Edmonton. Oh, okay. In 87. That's kind of how our, I clearly don't remember the tornado, but my mom told me about it. Uh, So that's how I remember when we came to Canada. But yeah, we left El Salvador because I was was born in the middle of a war. So it wasn't really the safest place to be. Um, Both both of my grandpas were dead already before I was born. And I was named, I'm actually named after my mom's brother. Okay. Uh, He was kidnapped, never seen again before I was born. Uh, so they named me to kind of remember him and and who he was. Uh, so that's what we left. Wow. I'm very like beyond grateful that my parents chose Canada out of all places to go. Um, because I've I've had opportunities and education and healthcare and all these things that a lot of people in the world don't have. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's different when you're sort of born here. It, you know, you, you tend to take that stuff for granted a little bit because it's just normal, right? Like you just grow up having healthcare. You don't think about. Yeah. So you don't know any different. Yeah. So it was, it was a big culture shock. I went back to El Salvador when I was 12. Okay huge culture shock oh I bet just how different it is how poor it is um, how dangerous it still is Um, 
yeah, the, I think one of the biggest things, like that, the first or second day we were there, I uh, walk into the mall. Okay. And there's two security guards standing there with shotguns. Wow, which we don't have here. <laughs> no, not even <laughs> close. And so I was like, whoa, like, oh yeah, like, don't steal anything here. <laughs> <laughs> like, just, yeah, it was, it's, yeah. But probably gave you a, an even bigger appreciation for the sacrifice that your parents had made to take you guys all here. Cause I mean, immigrating is not, I know a lot of people think it's, you know, well, you just come and that's it, but there's a, there's quite a lot more to it. It's not that easy. No, it's, it's hard. Like having to learn a new language, um, raising like my mom and dad came here with three young kids. Like I have a twin sister. Okay. Uh, so there's two of us at one and a half and my other sister's four years older. So wow. she would have been five. Uh, so coming here with no, no family support to like watch kids or like babysit or help out with whatever, um, not knowing anybody, uh, being on welfare, that kind of thing. It's, it's not easy. I, yeah. As, as when I started to get older and to like my twenties and that kind of thing and had a feeling for how difficult it is being an adult, I was, I think I'm like, how did my mom do it? Yeah. I always say that to my son. He always says that he wants to grow up, right? He's like, I just wish I was older. And I'm like, oh Lord, please don't like, just be young. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy. Yeah. yeah. But I remember being like I was like that as a kid too, right? I always wanted to be older because I thought there was so much more freedom. And now yeah. that I'm there, I'm trying to revert back. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, so what made you decide to write this book? So your book is called Life Balance um, yep. and uh, it's out. You can find it on Amazon, which is where I ordered my copy. So what, what kind of led you to wanting to write this particular book? I've always, I've always been a nerd. <laughs> I always, I've always considered myself like a big nerd. Like I love learning and then I love teaching people what I've learned. Right. Like, like I always message people, like anyone that's willing to listen, like, <laughs> Hey, like, guess what I did? Or like, I went to this course and it was about this, or like, I read this book and it was about this. So I'm always, that's like my favorite thing to do. And so at the time I was on EI, I had been laid off recently and I went it's I actually went to a course that teaches you how to write a book or that was that was their like their pitch okay like come to our course and we'll help you write your book kind of thing and so I was like okay like I'm not doing anything so and it was free uh, so free course okay let's go and I got the they gave me I worked with them for a little bit because my main thing was like, I didn't want to go back to having a full-time job. Right. So I was like, Hey, what am I going to do then? Cause I can't be on EI forever. And so my idea was like, Hey, I'm going to write this book and then I'll make money off of that. And that will lead to something else. And, and so I've started with life balance because I feel like a lot of people, so it's about health. And I want to show people that health has more to do than just what you eat and if you exercise or not. Right. Because I feel like that's the only conversation going on when people talk about health. It's true. Yeah. And in your book, you talk about um, that there's four significant areas of life to give you that balance. So you talk about, um, well, let's just talk about them. So um, the first one that you talk about in your book is... Um, about the mental balance. And yeah. one of the things that I loved the most in this chapter, um, and I'm going to just take it directly from it because I've just highlighted it in the book, um, right. which to me is that's, that's the biggest compliment I can ever give an author is I highlighted your book because yeah. usually I'm so, I, I found in my life, I, 
I would always try to keep them pristine. And now I like write all over them and then I give them to people. So like you said, I find that I love that sharing component of it, that they can see all my notes. They can see what I highlighted. Um, so now my books come back to me super highlighted. So <laughs> one of the, uh, one of the ones that I highlighted was um, you say, do you know that everyone talks to themselves? Do you mm. also know that the kind of conversations you have with yourself are important? The way you talk to yourself is much more important than anything anyone else could ever say to you. And that really spoke to me. So I was wondering if you could expand on that a little bit. Yeah, this is, this is huge because a lot of us, one, we don't, we don't realize that we're constantly talking to ourselves all the time. And it might not be right that like a conversation how we're having right now. Right. But it's, it's the thoughts that we think about ourselves and the things we say to ourselves when nobody's around or like, these are things that like we would never say to somebody else. And yet we're so hard on ourselves if we do something that's like bad or we're not doing the work that we need to do. And these are the things that stick with us. Um, so it's really important to like, like I am those two words. I, like I, I talk about it in the book too. Uh, they're the most powerful words in the in the English language to me. It's like anything we put after I am is true. Right. For us. It's true for us. So like a lot of people will, if they don't do well on their uh, like college entrance test of like, I'm dumb, I'm lazy, I'm this, I'm that. And it's like our, like our subconscious picks up all of that. It's like a sponge. And if we keep telling ourselves these things over and over again, we're going to, we're going to believe it, whether it's conscious or, or not at a, at a deeper level, we're going to believe it. And that's going to affect the kind of results that we have in life. It's going to affect our relationships. It's, it's going to affect everything. Um, and I agree with that too. Like I found too, in, in reading this chapter that, um, how often more so in my younger life, I allowed other people's opinions to then all of a sudden become mine. So um, like I never finished high school. I have two university degrees, but I never finished high school. And that was always sort of cast over top of me. So my yeah. self-talk was really poor when I was younger because I was like, well, I don't have a high school education. And it wasn't until um, you know, I really started learning about self-talk and how it was important that I sort of changed that. And you talk about that a lot in the book of, you know, changing the way you talk to yourself and how that can, you know, just domino effect on your life. Oh yeah, for sure. It's, it's, I'm sitting here smiling because I, I never finished high school either. And I stopped going at the end of grade 10. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And for me, it was, it, I never really held that against myself. I was just like, well, like it, I didn't feel like school was for me, but my teachers definitely had a big impact on the way I talked to myself. Cause they always, they always said, I was like, Rodolfo, you're so smart, but you're really lazy. Like there's right. no work ethic and that, and that, that stuck with me for sure about like the lazy part I'd always I've been telling myself that until like the last two years that I'm lazy and it's hard for me to do work and and that kind of thing um so yeah that's that's a hard one too my mom used to always say my mom and my grandmother used to always say try never to use but in a sentence because yeah. everything you say after the but is the truth and and it and the but negates everything you said beforehand and I just thought of that in, you know, in what you were saying. And it, it's true. You know, we say, you know, I love you, but you could do this. Well, yeah. <laughs> and do you really love me or yeah. like what are you saying right now? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing you mentioned um, towards the end of this chapter is that it's imperative to have a system to track your progress. If you're not hitting your goals, then you can make the necessary adjustments to keep pushing forward. And if you are hitting your targets, then make sure to congratulate yourself or even reward yourself. And I loved this. I do this myself now. Um, started it probably, I'll say in my 40s, I really started doing this because I wasn't keeping track when I was hitting my targets. I was kind of accomplishing stuff and then I was going, great, I accomplished it. 
but then that's all I was doing. So now I really do try. So what are some of the systems? What do you mean by some systems to track your progress? Do you have any in particular that you yourself use? Let's go to money. Okay. Because I feel like money is one of the easier ones to track because it's, it's a number on the screen. Uh, it changes every day kind of thing. Uh, so one of the things, it's actually from Achievement Club with Erin, okay. that she, she has her net worth uh, spreadsheet that is available to anyone in Achievement Club. I've shared it with people that aren't in Achievement Club too. Um, but there, you, I update it every month. So it's like last year, my goal was to pay off my debt. And so each month I updated, what do I have in the bank? How much is my debt? Uh, what savings, everything. So it was like, I saw where every single dollar was going. And each month I could see my debt getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And so then it was, it, it made it a lot easier. So I was like, yes, like I'm getting there. I'm this much percent away. It made it easier to say no to things that would, like that money could have been put towards debt instead of like, say, go to the bar or. Right. Cause you have to write it down. So you kind of, yeah. you have to see and, it. <laughs> yeah. And like, as I'm making progress, I'm like, Oh, like I'm almost there. Like if I just say no to like a couple more things, then I'll be there. And then I can start saying yes to stuff. So it's just, it's motivating for me. It's easy to track. Um, like weight is another one for people that I think, it's easy to track, not easy to do, because um, you just, you step on the scale. Right. Yeah. And like, I, def I don't, wouldn't recommend stepping on the scale every day because that <laughs> could, because that could be like, even myself, I'm a small guy. I'm only about 150 pounds. Oh yeah. You are tiny. My, like my weight changes every day. I don't even like know. This. I'll be honest with you. For that one, that would be a hard one for me. I don't even know. I had to do, redo my life insurance. And I yeah. said to the lady, she's like, we have to take your weight. And I was like, that's great. Don't tell me what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that's a number I, I don't want to know. But I do think it's important to sort of keep that track. I know for me, like I used to do big to-do lists. Like I would sit down at the beginning of my day and I could come up with a list of stuff that was unrealistic. Like I, yeah. even if all I did was do one task after another. I would put so much stuff on there, I'd never be able to fulfill it. And one of the things, um, I'm also a member of the Achievement Club with Aaron Sky Kelly that you had mentioned. And one of the things that I changed doing um, was only doing a top three. What are my three most important things that I want to accomplish? And I agree with you that having that system was important because I feel accomplished at the end of my day. I don't, I'm now looking at it as, I crossed off everything on my list, not, I crossed off three things on a list of, you know, 80. Of a hundred. Yeah. 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 That's like I mentioned on the call we were on last week too, that, uh, I love, um, there's a podcast I watch with Andy Frisella. Okay. Yep. Uh, the MF CEO project and he talks on there. He, he has an episode called win the day. Yes, same I thing. remember you mentioning that. Yeah, same idea. It's what are the five things you're going to do today to move you forward, to get you closer to your goals and that kind of thing. And he's like, don't write down 20 things. Don't write down 10 things. Write down five things when you get up in the morning and do them first. And that way they're done before noon or whatever. And no matter what happens for the rest of the day, that day was still a win. Yeah. And it's so important. Like there's so much stuff, you know, the eat the frog, you know, mentality yeah. of do the thing that's like the worst, get it done and over with. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, there yeah. was also a YouTube video on a military gentleman who said the first thing you need to do is make your bed every day mm -hmm. because then, you know, you've accomplished something. <laughs> yeah. so I think that's so true. Um, the next thing that you talk about um, is um, physical. So you talk about that with not only like food and water, but exercise as well. So tell us a little bit about that part of the book. I think this was probably the easiest part of the book for me to write. Uh, just because I've, I've always been active uh, since I was a kid. Like 
we I grew up across the street from like the river valley. Okay. So I was always down there, like riding my bike, rollerblading, uh, playing soccer, whatever. And even now, like I go to the gym pretty regularly. I play soccer on two teams. Uh, my dog keeps me active. I take her out every day. Um, now that it's nicer, like I, I do my best spring, summer, fall to take her out twice a day. Right. Um, so I'm always active. It, if, like it, it helps me. It helps with my mindset a lot. There's a lot of times where like I'll, I'll be at home working on something or like I feel overwhelmed because I have like write that million thing to do list. Right. And I'll, I'll just leave it and, and go for a walk with my dog. It helps to shift the energy. It helps to shift my mindset, my emotions. And, and then when I come back home, I feel so much better. And I'm like, okay, let's just do the next thing. And especially like being outside with my dog, I, it's, it's my favorite thing because it's the, the fresh air, being in nature, that kind of thing. It definitely helps with my emotions and feeling better. Um, yeah, it's a great way to move energy. And I find you talk a lot too about um, that you have to find what your, you know, for the physical fitness and stuff, you talk about how you need to find what works for you. So you're not essentially saying that someone has to go to the gym five times a day or, but you have to find what, what your mm. comfort zone is and what works for each individual, which I think is a key point because a lot of times, I'm not 150 pounds, <laughs> but a yeah. lot of times people struggle with that, right? Because they feel like they, you know, have to go to the gym and work out for an hour and that doesn't work for everybody. Yeah, no, cause we're all, we're all at different levels and right. Like not everybody can play soccer on two teams and, or even like, like soccer. Um, so like, I, I like using my mom as an example. Like I mentioned her in the book a few times too. Um, she, we live close to the train station. Okay. So she walks to the train station every day, even in the winter, instead of driving. Right. And so that's one thing she does. She, on commercial, she, she loves watching TV. Um, so on, on commercials, she's like walking up and down the stairs or she has like weights she'll do like walk circles around like the main floor like carrying her weights and stuff it's just like little things that can make a, such a big difference in our lives like like the walk to the train station is 10 minutes yeah right? like she's not walking a marathon or anything but it that's twice a day that she does that um so yeah definitely like finding yeah, yeah, finding things to keep yourself active and yeah, and like, like starting s starting small, right? Like if you want to run five k, start with running one. Right. And yeah, like I'm not a runner, <laughs> but I'm the same yeah. as you. Like I have I have a dog, so I take her for a walk quite a bit. Um, and yeah, whenever I'm stuck or I just feel like blocked, um, I find just getting outside, just changing my my environment, changing my atmosphere helps. And then just walking around or pacing. Sometimes it's just pacing. All of a sudden ideas, you know, will come to me or I do simple stuff like, you know, I, I work from home now. So, um, you know, I trudge up the flights of stairs to go to the bathroom instead of, you know, just going around the corner, you know, from yeah. my, from my office and stuff. So I think that's, you know, that's really important. And you talk a lot too about food and, and water, um, in the book as well. Um, and about making sure that you're using stuff that um, is and in today's today's society it's so hard because um, you know there's so much out there that you know throws organic on it or you know <clears throat> that you know you think you're getting you think you're doing good um, yeah. so can you talk to us a little bit about what you mean by the food and water part being as like a single guy when I was living on my own I don't like I don't cook much Mm -hmm. So I was always like eating McDonald's or A&W or going out to eat and that kind of thing. And right, I said I'm 150 right now. When I was living on my own before, I was 170. Right. So like, that's a big difference um, for, for someone of my size. And I didn't feel good. I didn't have as much energy and that kind of thing. Nowadays, I'm now that like I'm in my 30s and I'm more aware of 
what it's doing to my body. Every day I start my day with a smoothie. So to me, it's, I don't have to cook. I can just throw like a bunch of stuff into like this <laughs> blender, five minutes, boom, done. One minute to clean up. It's so it's like, it's practically no work. Right. And I get, I get everything I need to have a good day to feel good. Like I throw, I throw so many things in there, like protein, hemp seeds, apple cider vinegar, coconut oil, like all these, like my greens, like spinach and kale and everything uh, to make sure it's like at least, at least one meal a day, I'm eating healthy. Right. And I'm getting all the vitamins and everything that I need. And I think it's, I think it's like you said that people just need to try to find what works for them because eating healthy doesn't necessarily, like you said, the smoothie, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to take, you know, a ton of time to do stuff. And it's, it's the repetition of it too. Cause I found when I started trying to, to change my diet and stuff, um, you know, I, I was sort of forced to, um, by my doctor <laughs> and said, I didn't yeah. have a choice. Now I find it's harder to go out and just buy something because I'm so used to just, you know, frying up some vegetables, you know, just in a little bit of olive oil and that being my supper, you know, I enjoy that much more than, you know, the McDonald's and stuff that seems to, you know, bog you down and stuff. Oh yeah, for sure. You, the next one that you talk about is emotional IQ um, in your book. And this one, um, this one really, this was a hard chapter for me to read, which I thought was funny because you talk about that. It was a challenging subject for you to write about. Um, yeah. And for me, it's because, well, you say in the book that growing up, you never talked about your feelings um, and that, that you feel that especially for men, that society has made it the norm to sort of bottle up your emotions. And I related to this so much because I see it. I have a son and I see it all the time of people telling him, you know, if he would fall and he would cry, you know, other men would say, you know, just suck it up, you know, quit your crying and stuff like that. So coming from a, a male perspective, what, what do, do you feel that that has changed since you wrote the book or do you find that like it's getting any better? for men to be able to show emotion besides toughness? It's being talked about more. Right. So it's definitely being talked about more. Um, I don't feel, I don't feel like it's as taboo anymore for men to cry and, and show emotion and that kind of thing. Um, it's definitely not, where we need to be there's right. definitely a, a like a long way to go still because there's definitely still people that do make fun of other men or say things behind their backs and things like that or um but it's 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 growing with people like terry cruz out there like speaking up and saying things or um it's it's we're moving in the right direction for yeah. Sure. And I think it's wonderful that you wrote um, all that you did. And there's more than just those two little bits that I read. Um, but I think it's important to get the word out there because, um, yeah, that is, it's not healthy for one to, no. to bottle up all of your emotions and stuff. Um, but I think it's a conversation that does need to be said on both sides, right? Um, I you know, there was a, a shirt that somebody sent me that said, uh, if my mouth doesn't say it, my face will. Um, and that's always been my problem, right? It's, it's written, everything that I'm feeling or thinking is sort of written on my face. But as a woman, I didn't find that much of a struggle because people would just say, ah, oh, she's a girl, she's emotional or girls cry. And so it was a lot more accepted, but my son right. is a very, um, uh, he wears his heart on his sleeve. He's very sensitive and emotional. And I don't think that that's bad. So I always try to encourage that. But he, um, he gets picked on a lot at school because, you know, he will, his eyes will tear up if somebody says something that upsets him and stuff. So what are some of the things you think that we could do to help this situation? Yeah, no, and that's a big one because I can, I can totally relate with your son because that's, that's me. I'm, I'm a very emotional guy. And in school, I was, I was that kid that would cry if somebody 
like especially with my name like Rodolfo for some reason people just have a really hard time saying my name and in elementary people would call me like Rudolph or like just like all these other things and it would get to me right and I would like cry in class and then people would make fun of me or even like had like had a couple of teachers say things to me or and then that like that definitely weighs on you and so I think a big part of it is is having that conversation right like nobody told me it was okay nobody checked in with me and to see how I felt or anything like that so being able like like parents and teachers and talking to having these kinds of conversations and opening up dialogue and showing people um, how to treat each other. Cause I feel there's too much, there's too much emphasis on listen to what I say. Right. Whether that's from parents, teachers or whatever, instead of like, Hey, this is how would you feel if someone did this to you instead of like morals and values and that kind of thing and empathy and, and I think we're a lot like that in as adults too. And um, you had mentioned this that we don't. Um, I'm paraphrasing, but we we don't ask each other truthfully when we're asking how someone's doing. We're not truthfully asking. Like it's almost just become another way to say hi. Um, and and I always try to ask twice when I ask someone how they're doing. You know, I'll say how are you, and they'll say oh I'm fine, and I'll go how are you? And then I find that they open up because they're like, oh, you don't want me to just say fine. Like you, you really want to know how I'm feeling. So how is your emotional IQ important in life balance? All the areas are connected. Uh, So if, if I think back to my younger days and, and bottling all that up, right. Cause as, as people started making fun of me for crying and this and that, and stuff I started not doing it anymore and I started bottling it up and as I got into my teen years that came out as anger right and so then I started getting into like fights or getting into trouble and things like that so I was like okay well if you're gonna make fun of me I can't cry because that's weak so I'm gonna hit you right um so that's like one thing as like adults it it when we bottle up our emotions and that kind of thing, it can come out as disease. Uh, so there's a woman I, I talk about, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned her in my book, Louise Hay. Yes. She talks about like, it's our, all the, all the, like the physical disease, there's, there's emotional symptoms behind them. Uh, if I can give an example, I, so I play a lot of soccer and in the, in the past, not so much anymore, but I had a lot of ankle injuries. Right. And so I'd always have to play with an ankle brace and I got so bad I was playing with a brace on both ankles. And then when I looked it up, what Louise Hay has to say about it, she says the ankles are about guilt and not being able to enjoy life and beating ourselves up and that kind of thing. And it totally resonated with me because I, I've, I've walked around with a lot of guilt in my life for things I've done in the past or whatever. And once I've, I've started doing a lot of work to heal that and forgive myself and that, like, I don't, I don't wear those braces anymore. And right. Like I never, I didn't get surgery or anything like that. It's, it's been mostly from doing the work. And of course, like I, I, not to say that I just did the work and threw my brace away. Right. <laughs> there's the, like the physical aspect is still there, right? Like we still got to take care of ourselves, but like the emotional work has as big as an impact on us as wearing the brace does. And I think that this is such a key um, chapter that you have because it's, I find can sometimes be the hardest one to work on because you have to be truthful with yourself um, and with your self-talk, which we had talked about before. And that can be, that can be difficult for a lot of people because yeah, you're raised your whole life to sort of suck it up. And then now you're trying to open those jars and it can present a a lot of stuff. But I agree with you. I do um, feel that um, our emotions directly relate to how our body is feeling. I know that 
if I'm mad or angry, I guarantee my neck will seize the next day. So yeah. if I really hold on to that and I don't, you know, release it, and I'm not saying I try to walk around like a crazed woman, just letting my anger out. But if I don't deal with it and I go to sleep the next day, guaranteed, I wake up and my neck is stiff. So I've really learned how to, you know, try to make sure that I, I don't go to bed angry. There's something to that saying, <laughs> never go to bed mad. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's going to affect your sleep and that. And like, I, I, do my best because sleep is such an important time of the day. It's, I've, it's where we're closest to the subconscious and, and all of that. So I do my, before I go to sleep and when I wake up, I give thanks. Right. Like, thank you for a wonderful day. Thank you for letting me wake up again. Thank you. Thank you for this and that, everything I'm grateful for. And it's, it definitely helps set the tone for the day or to end the day or, it's, yeah. It's and I think that's wonderful. I do that. I do do that myself as well. And I do it with my son before he goes to sleep. I make him tell me three things that were funny or that he enjoyed or something that was just good about the day. And the more I do it with him, the more it's easy for him to find those, those things. And sometimes they're dumb. Like, you know, I ate a chocolate egg today and made me, happy. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it's something, right? It's, it's putting yeah. your, putting your emotions to a positive side, especially before you go to sleep, because we heal the most when, when we're sleeping. So I think that's important. Um, yeah. And then you do talk a lot about spirituality. Now, I love what you said, because you said in your book, you wrote to me, spirituality is an awareness of the bigger picture and what role we have to play in that bigger picture. It's an awareness that there is a force or energy out there that is bigger than all of us that is here to support us. And you really talk a lot about spirituality being an individual thing. So you're not necessarily talking about one particular religion. You're talking about spirituality. Can you expand on that a little bit for our listeners? Yeah, I feel what spirituality is to me could be totally different from what it is to you and that's okay right that there's not i'm not i'm not right and you're wrong it's that's what spirituality is it's it's about inclusiveness and like it's all encompassing and there's no one like there's no such thing as i'm more spiritual than you or my spirituality is better than yours because we we're spiritual beings having a human experience right not the other way around so it's like we're we're nothing but spiritual so how could anybody be more spiritual than you when we're that's that's what we are is spirit and energy and so it's like it's it's whatever way you want to connect with spirit or consciousness whatever people want to call it and that's what works for you so it's like right some people go to church every Sunday. Some people go for walks in nature. Um, some people meditate. Like there's, there's no wrong way. It's just about finding your way, your path. And, and if that works for you, then cool. Awesome. Like it's like no, no judgment, right? It's just about accepting each other. So we're all different we're all different paths and yeah, it's about, I feel like it's just finding, finding your own way. Cause we're all going to end up back at the same place. Right. There's just going to be a million different roads to get there. And I think it's the acceptance too is, is, you know, especially when, you know, they always say never talk about religion, but, and I think they say that because there is, there is almost, you know, with religion comes competition sometimes. And that's why I like that you talk more about spirituality, about, you know, like you said, believing what works for you, because yeah, what works for one person might not work for the other. So with all of these areas, the mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual, how do you, um, without giving away the whole book, how do yeah. you find that, um, to get the life balance, what do you need to do with those areas to feel fully balanced? Yeah, so it's, it's definitely important to have a practice in each of the areas um, because if if we so say for for men, right? If if we're gonna 
have a mental, physical, and spiritual practice, but ignore the emotional, things are going to come up, right? Like, like I said, emotions are tied to disease. So maybe like could eat healthy and everything, but if you're not dealing with the emotional, you're going to get sick. You're going to have disease. You're going to this and that. Um, so uh, there's, there's ways it's important to have one, at least one practice in each area. Um, I mentioned like yoga is, is great because I feel like it covers like all four of right. the areas, depending on like the intent you set when doing yoga. Uh, so there's, it's not that we have to go and get all these new things to do. A lot of it has to do with the intent behind it. Right. So if I'm, I'm doing yoga with the intent to open up space for my emotions, then it can be emotional and physical at the same time. If I'm doing yoga and I'm making, I'm focusing on my breath and I'm saying my affirmations at the same time, it's, it's leaping into the mental and that kind of thing. And so there's, there's things that we can do that will, will, it's kind of like killing two birds with one stone. Right. And like, and like the spiritual one is, it's, it's my favorite thing to talk about. It's, it's a lot of time. It's just, it's being aware of, like I said, the bigger picture and uh, like, I love, I love Canada because it's like when I walk into rooms and like, I was at Toastmasters last night, there's people from like, 10 different countries in my club and it's easy to be like oh yeah like that's cool yeah it's 10 countries but then it's like if you think about all the little things that had to happen in my life and their life and their parents lives and all that for us to be in the same room at the same time it's to me that's like just grand and like wow like that's it's not a coincidence right whereas like that that's spiritual yeah. To me, where, like a spiritual is not this big grand thing where I have to be in like a temple bowing down and stuff. It's, it's everyday life and just acknowledging that it's, it's, it happened for a reason. It wasn't an accident. I, I didn't meet you by accident and that kind of thing. So it's not this big practice that we have to add. It's just the little, the little things that matter, right? Yeah. Walking to the train station instead of driving saying thank you before you go to sleep um being honest with people um it's it's little things that doesn't have to be anything huge i think too in today's society we don't we often forget to take the time to to see that um and and sometimes it's kids that remind us for me it's kids i think i love being around children because i think they see the magic in in everything right and you know I I always love just paying attention to what it is that they find you know they'll find the little flower growing you know out of the sidewalk and you know just think you know how its struggle you know was there and and you know just sitting in your own silence um, is something I try to do every day so no distractions no nothing I just sit there and let let my brain kind of dump itself out and see sort of what comes up and and what it discovers. But I think, yeah, I think you're right. It is important. And I think it changes your perspective on events too, when you think that there's something bigger that put that person in your path, whether it was just to put a smile on your face that day, or whether it was, you know, to change your life can, you know, it, it's just, yeah, it's, it, it is really inspiring. There was a story um, where I used to live in Ottawa of a gentleman that was walking by the train tracks and a lady stopped him and, and um, asked him how he was. And he said, oh, I'm fine. And she says, this might be weird, but I feel like I need to hug you. And so anyway, she gave him a big hug and she moved on with her day. And then the guy actually ended up going to the papers and writing a story that he was going to to kill himself he was going to stand in front of the train and that lady he has no idea who she was he was trying to find her to thank her changed his life because he felt like nobody cared about him that nobody that he didn't matter in this world and so to her it was just she was just like i don't know here's a hug see you later you know but to him it was 
you know, awe inspiring. And I think if we keep that, I've always tried to keep that in my head of, you know, trying to be kind or trying to share a smile or share a laugh and how you never know what you're doing, how that affects someone else, you know, good or bad. So it's better to head to the good. Oh yeah. Big time. Like if it's, it's easier, like in, in hindsight, when you look back at past events and how it kept you away from maybe like bad situations or maybe something that you thought was going to be good and that you wanted and then not getting it kind of led to something better or got you on a better path and stuff. It's so it's easier. Like when we look back at how it works, it's, it's definitely harder in the moment. Like say you just got laid off and you're like, Oh, like you don't know how much you're going to do for job and for work and how you're going to pay the bills. But six months later, you're writing a book and you're doing your life coach certification course and stuff. And then two years later, you're laughing about it. Like, oh, I can't believe I was worried about that. And look how awesome everything is now. And so it's, it's definitely harder in the moment. And that's why, again, like gratitude in the moment, like where even when we get laid off and things like just being in Canada, we're not we're ahead of 90 percent of the world just by being here. So it's like, we always have something to be thankful for here. Yeah. Where it's just, yeah. So having that kind of mindset where it's like, okay, like, thank you. I know there's meaning behind this. I know there's purpose. I might not see it right now, but thank you. And like, let's, let's see where this goes. And just always remembering that we're, we're, we're being supported. We're being led to where we need to be and in the end it will it will get better it will work out and just to keep going and not give up not quit um no matter what yeah and you you do talk a lot more in the book too i'm gonna leave it so that people um uh, can go so they can find your book on amazon yeah. Um, that's where I found it. And then also your website. So we'll have all of those links as well for everybody to check out. And you do talk a little, you do talk more in the book about, you know, each, each of the areas and, and how, and, you know, tips and stuff like that for them to work on it. One of the things I loved the most about your book was actually in your conclusion part. Um, cause I don't see this often enough in books. So I, I really like that you did it and you wrote, you may be asking yourself what now. So you talk about how lots of times when people are done reading a book, they place it on the shelf and just kind of move on. And for the most part, time passes and they kind of forget what was contained in the book. But um, the, the journey towards living a healthy life is long and it's not going to happen overnight. So if those people think that they're just going to read the book and then that's it, they're fixed. There's work yeah. that has to be done to it but that, you, that you've sort of made it a mission of yours to constantly create content to help people stay connected and engaged. So what are some of the ways, besides purchasing your book, what are some of the tools that you have out there right now for people to continue on this path? Because you have, like they, you have your Facebook uh, and some of your other social media that you post on, but you also yeah. have, um, you also have a, a membership group that people can join to be with other like-minded people. Can you tell our listeners a bit about what that, what that is? Yeah. So about five, six months ago, I started uh, the membership group and what it is, I call it affordable coaching because I was, I was learning a lot of times when I speak with people, like they they want help. They know they want help and they don't want to pay $150 an hour. Right. Uh, money is always comes up as a consideration. And so I, I was thinking like, Hey, what can I do? That's going to support the most amount of people for the most economical way, I guess, to put it. And so it started group coaching and I think it's, it's four dollars us a month to join so i wanted it to be if you want help money is not the issue right it's right. it's something people can say yes to and so they get i do a group coaching call once a month i just did marches on sunday and so it just helps people stay accountable get help they need in a group setting i love group work 
because I always learn from what other people are dealing with too. Um, whether I'm dealing with it right now, or maybe I'll be dealing with it next week or in a month or six months, whatever it's like, like attracts like. Yeah. So it's like a lot of the people in the group are dealing with things that I've dealt with or am dealing with. So I get ideas from them, a new perspective, support, uh, people get access to a private Facebook group where it's like, Hey, if you're struggling with something, post in here and we'll, we'll like everyone will do their best to help you out or give you ideas, help you brainstorm. Uh, there was a couple people, I gave them assignments on Sunday and I was like, okay, when are you going to have this done by? Cause I think it's important to have that deadline. And I was like, okay, so by next Sunday at 9.30, you're going to post in the group and tell us how it went and, and that kind of thing. And if we don't see a post in the group, we're going to reach out to you. Not to be like, oh, you're bad. You didn't do that. But just, hey, like, what's going on? Are you okay? Do you need support? That kind of thing. Uh, so it helps when you're not doing it on your own, when you have people to reach out to for support. And when you see other people accomplishing things and doing things, it's, it's, it helps to have that community behind you. So, yeah, yeah. I love that idea. And I agree with you. I think that the more we share our experiences, the more we help others. And I totally have felt that this is a huge area that that society is lacking in. We don't sit around the fires at night and tell the stories of, you know, what happened. And I found this more so when I sat down and talked with my mom. I think I'd asked her like a really simplistic question and she went into a story of her childhood and I was shocked, like yeah. just shocked about how she was raised. I had no idea no idea that she went through all that she went through or my grandmother went through and it really created this um this passion in me to share our stories and even for me to share my stories with my son oh, my life was a hundred times easier than what my mom's was but to keep those stories going um because I find we learn from them it's you know it's easier to learn from other people's mistakes than to try to make them all ourselves um sure. and so I, I think that that's important. I think sharing stories and sharing ideas and be willing to open our emotions to other people and express, you know, hey, I need help. And I think that's important. I love that your group is doing that because I think we need to start getting to a point where we feel more comfortable, um, not only when within ourselves, but within the group that we're surrounded with to feel like you can say, I need help and you won't be ridiculed for that. So I love that you have that. We're going to have all of the links as well to all of your groups so that if anybody is interested, they can um, definitely reach out and find, find you. Um, awesome. What is your website? Because that has sort of links to everything that you do. Yes. Uh, so my website is just my name, Um And then, yeah, you can pretty much find everything on there. There's links to the group coaching uh there's links to like amazon for the book um there's links to my facebook and instagram i don't have twitter um i love doing facebook live okay uh, so facebook kind of, would probably be the best one for people to find you at yeah facebook and instagram i like i love instagram too like the stories and 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 that thing it's yeah yeah those so sure. you're going, um, so you live in Edmonton, Alberta. And so yeah. anybody who's around that area, you have actually a workshop that's coming up at the end of this month. So can you tell us a little bit about this workshop? Yes. And it's awesome because I wanted to have everything like the details and everything kind of hammered out by today. So I could share with you and your listeners and Monday night, I was feeling kind of down. I'm like, oh, like I have a million things to do. And like finding a venue for this was way harder than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. And, but I was kind of, again, I, I left with my dog to like clear my mind and clear the air. And then when I came back, it was like, it was like magic. I just, my, my hand wouldn't start moving. I was up to like 1.30 in the morning like writing I have like pages and pages now of like everything that's awesome um, so it's 
the night's going to be called redefining spirituality. Okay. And it's similar to like what we talked about earlier, where it's like, I feel like we're so caught up in talking about what spirituality is and what it isn't where we need to kind of throw all of that away and find what it is for me, find what it is for you and redefine it in a way that's going to work for you. And, and with that, that's going to work for you and going to support you and help you move forward, help you see that bigger picture, help you kind of get rid of some of the old stigmas and things. Cause I feel when we define it, we limit ourselves. Uh, we place these limits on ourselves and it's going to limit the kind of experiences I can have. It's going to limit the kind of relationships we have right. and, and all of that. So I want to get rid of those limits and start letting ourselves grow, um, grow together. So it's like we can be spiritual together, even if the path is a lot different. So this is really going to be like a hands-on sort of workshop. Oh yeah, definitely. It'll be a workshop. Like I have um, a few activities I want, I want to do with people. It's going to be like, it won't just be me at the front of the room talking. It's definitely going to be hands-on. So if people want to come, definitely be prepared to work either with a partner or small groups um, possibly like sharing in the big group. It's going to be, I think the space, there's 40 tickets available. Um, so yeah, there's, it's definitely, it's going to be three hours for the evening. And I did create a promo code for people that listen to this show where they can get 25% off. Yes. Thank you for that. So for all of our listeners, if you're interested, we'll have the link to be able to purchase the tickets. And then yes, if you use the promo code Fox talks, you can get 25% off this workshop and it is April, April 25th, 25th at what time? 630. Okay. It's at the orange hub in Edmonton. Perfect. Um, Yeah. I'm really excited for it. Like I said, like I have like, even last night, again, I started writing down and it's just kept flowing and flowing. And so I have like this big vision of what I want people to go home with and just, yeah, it's going to be awesome. I'm excited. I haven't been this excited for something in a long time. And yeah. Oh, that's good. It shows. So just before we go, what was your favorite thing about writing this book, Life Balance? Probably the, everything that's come from it with with writing it like i I haven't made a million dollars right so it it was yet (laughs) Uh, yes yet and but just all the conversations that have come from it right like this podcast uh, all the people i've met uh people that have helped uh even this book was kind of what led me to being a coach i've never ever thought about being a coach prior to writing this book and it kind of just came from the book um so yeah definitely my favorite parts all the conversations and people i've met and people i've helped and all the opportunities that have come from the book yeah it's been awesome it's been a ride and it's only been two years that's awesome so what was the hardest thing about writing the book (laughs) the editing (laughs) the editing (laughs) I'm the with editing you. just yeah that sucks the editing added on so much more work um a little tip for anyone that is thinking about writing a book or something like i i started on my computer on microsoft word right one page in microsoft word does not equal one page in a book okay. i thought i thought that's how it worked Right. <laughs> so I, wanted, I wanted my book to be like 100, 115 pages. So I had about that much on Microsoft Word and that turned into like almost 200. Right. Once I formatted it into a book and I was like, oh my God, like, this is way too long. And I had to like spend all this time cutting out like 80 pages and just, oh man. Yeah. So and you is- actually have a funny story about your sister because she was the first oh, one. Yeah. She was your big supporter. My twin sister was the first person. I started a GoFundMe actually to pay f- to order the book, 
so I could order copies. Okay. And my sister's the first one to pay, so she got the very first copy. And then she's messaging me, hey, like page 27, third paragraph, there's a mistake, like there's <laughs> an extra space or you missed a comma or something. And then, oh, page 48, second paragraph. She, so she messaged me every mistake that she caught, said nothing about the book or the content, <laughs> just, hey, page 37. And so I made notes. I wrote down everything she told me and I updated the book about six months ago. Uh, fixing all of that and fixing a couple other things and so yeah it's I hope it's all done now <laughs> <laughs> that'll be the challenge but, uh, everybody who reads the book yeah fi find a mistake if you can find one send it send it to you I was yeah. actually I was so interested in the content that was in the book I wasn't even paying attention to grammar so it, it's it's well written it's an easy read um, yeah, I really, I really enjoyed the book and I, I found it gave me a lot of stuff to think about too. Um, especially in the spirituality section, it, it, I love learning about other religions. Um, it's something yeah. that my mom kind of instilled in me when I was young, we, we were raised Catholic is kind of where we went, but, um, I came home one day and said, I think I want to be Jewish. And my mom was like, <laughs> okay. And so she found somebody to take me to a synagogue and, you know, and then I was yeah. like, I want to be Buddhist now. And she was like, okay. And so she, <laughs> you know, she always says it was such a struggle to find these people, but yeah. I just love, love learning about what other people, you know, think what, what drives them, what, you know, so I, that, that section really, really touched me and really spoke to me. So, um, so I encourage people to head out and um, purchase your book. And like you said about your coaching, um, that you try to make it affordable for people. Your book is too. I think it was like 15 bucks or something on Amazon. So it was, you know, it's yeah, not expensive at all. American, 15 US. Yeah. Uh, so it's about 20 Canadian. Yeah. So the Kindle, the Kindle versions five Canadian, I think. So yeah. It's, yeah. So affordable for, for everybody to purchase. And, and it's totally, totally worth it. I think I really enjoyed the book. So I thank know you. you're a super busy guy and preparing for your um, workshop that's coming up. So thank you so much for taking the time to, to speak with us a little bit more about your book. And um, yeah, we're going to have, I'm going to actually have, I'm waiting. I ordered a couple of copies, so I'm waiting for them to come in, um, which should be any day now. So I'm going to do a special contest on our Facebook page where awesome. you can get a copy of the book yourself. And since I'm not far from you, I might be able to convince Rodolfo to actually give you a signed copy of the book. Awesome. <laughs> Great. I can um, definitely do that. That would be awesome for our listeners. So all you're going to have to do is head over to our Facebook page and let us know what the area, mental, physical, emotional, or spiritual, you find the hardest to work on. Let us know that and you'll be entered in to win a signed copy of Rodolfo's amazing book called Life Balance. So thank you so much for coming today. Is there anything else you want to say to our listeners before we go? Start small. Set yourself up for success, right? It's, it's the little things in life. Like I said, the example, if, if you want to run 5K, start with one, right? Work your way up to things and, and give yourself the best chance to succeed. But just start. Yeah, to start, start, do something. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much again for joining us. Thank you. It's my pleasure. I look forward to doing more with you in the future. Me too. So a huge thank you again to Rodolfo Menjavar for coming on my podcast to talk about his amazing book, Life Balance. We are going to have all of the links available for you. So just head over to our website, foxtalksbusiness.ca. If you click on blogs at the top, you will be able to see his beautiful face and you'll just click on that and you'll get all of the links to everything we talked about in the show. And don't forget, he has offered his amazing discount of 25% off if you register for his course and just use the promo code FOXTALKS to get your discount. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I learned so much from Rodolfo and um, am so fortunate that I have him in my list of contacts and uh, I look forward to learning many, many more things from him. 
So I want to thank you, the listeners, for always tuning in and for your amazing comments um, that you leave for me. Um, If you have a moment, take time to subscribe so you will know all of our upcoming episodes as soon as they're released. And also feel free to leave a review. On our next episode, we're actually going to be featuring a review that someone's left. So if you have anything to say, we always love to hear it. My name is Tanya Fox. You are listening to Fox Talks Business, and I'm reminding you to have fun because if you're not having fun, why are you doing it?